Once again, we thank everyone for taking time out of their schedules to come out and fellowship one with another in the spirit of love, peace, unity, for the good, the holy, and the beautiful. We thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over and protecting us, blessing us with good health, our finances, our roof, our clothes. We thank you for this word that will be spoken from the Holy Spirit as we open up our hearts and minds and receive it by love and by faith, apply into our lives and take into a world that's good, holy, and beautiful. Thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, for that is the essence of our being. We thank you for blessing over those that are less fortunate than ourselves, the homeless, the sick and shut in. Bless over those that are traveling, give them traveling grace to and from their destination. Continue to bless over all the churches in the world, every last one of them, regardless of their denomination, that we all teach and preach the same thing, to be in one accord, there be no division amongst us. Bless over our neighbors, our neighborhood. Bless over those that are sick and shut in, that you restore healing to them, if that be thy will. Bless over those who had lost loved ones that you comfort and touch their heart. And we just thank you for so many things and our day. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, let us begin. Praise report, testimonies by the ways. Who got them all? Everyone. I got so many. I got, I, I have, I have one to share real quick. Yes. Um, so about a week ago, I started thinking about uh, making money and how I can make it easily. And, and I'm just seeing so many signs along the way. When I was yes. playing a game, all the repeating numbers. And when I was reading an article online, and then, um, and then at one point in time, I think I was watching a show. Um, and so I, I had this question asking, it's like, I wonder if wealth would come in. And I actually took a quote here. Let me find that quote. I actually took the quote down. And here is what it said. Um, let's see if I have it. No, I do not have it. Shucks. But... It said along the lines of that um, your wealth is coming mm -hmm. and you will, you will be forever living in, in, what was that? In harmony and with, with everything around you. Yes. In, with having more than enough. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And that's so right. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, yeah, that, that, that speaks to me. And even though it's part of the script of the show, wherever it is, but I felt like that was sticking out to me. And I was like, that's actually a pretty cool message. And yep. true enough, on Friday, I got myself a check from ICBC. <laughs> you rock. Congratulations. The universe knows how to deliver. God knows how to deliver. Ask, it's given. And it came right on time. Now you can go buy all the stuff you don't need. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk that another day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Congratulations. Look at that manifestation. And what is, what is happening is you are getting into the alignment of what you are creating. You're following that desire of the good following trail of what if I had the idea of, and you follow the good thought of what if I had the idea and you caught up with it, and now look at the manifestation. That is the blessing. That is the fun. That's when you have fun with it. That's when you say it's too what? Easy. This is too easy, Pastor. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Yes, Lily. We supposed to have uh, another heat wave in Vancouver. And uh, it's supposed to be for uh, start, it's supposed to start on Friday or something like that. Yes. So, but uh, Friday, yesterday, yesterday, no, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago. So, mm -hmm. we, we did we did suffer a bit on Friday, <laughs> and then on Saturday morning, Boho Baba said, No, cool up and let it rain. That's right, and then it started to rain a bit, yeah. only a few drops. And then so I said, a more. bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Another two minutes and then it stops. <laughs> That's okay. But you're playing with the idea and you're playing with the reality of what sort of you desire when you pray, believing you should receive them. You follow the five steps. And matter of fact, you cut the five steps into three. Be, do, have. Be, mm. do, have. It was very simple. You spoke to it. You didn't have to do like Pastor when he first did it and look around and make sure nobody was looking because he was ashamed and didn't want people to think I was a nutcase talking to myself or this inanimate object called the car. <laughs> so
So you spoke to the weather and you got two minutes of what? Cool weather and all of that people were in shock going, where'd that rain come from? <laughs> that wasn't in the forecast. Yes, no, it's not that. <laughs> it wasn't there. <laughs> So now the weathermen are all jacked up because they procrastinated this whole heat wave. And now here you are tweaking with the weather and playing with the people. You might get them people fired. <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> and we do it over here in this area. They said that it was, uh, was going to be hot. And all of a sudden I said, eh, let's have rain. And we end up getting a few showers. Didn't last very long, but Actually, it was it turned into a flash flood. We had two flash floods over here. <laughs> wow. We had rain too. So oh, <laughs> I saw y'all's heat. I was like, oh my goodness. Uh, California has uh, uh declared drought this they year. Didn't check with me before they said that, so they're in battle. <laughs> <laughs> they should have asked me first. <laughs> All right. If there be none, we are on page, oh, 297, and, oh, and a thunderstorm warning, my son says. Before I forget, tomorrow I have a volleyball game, I mean, not a volleyball game, a mandatory volleyball meeting from 6 to 8. So I'm going to ask you all, do you guys want to counsel tomorrow? This is the only time I'll let you choose. I was going to choose for you, but I'll let you choose this time. Or do you want to do from 8.30 to 9.30, or we just cancel. If you say cancel, you will not hurt my feelings at all. If you say 8.30 to 9.30, we're good to go. You Whatever let you me. like, Pastor. I'm open to 8.30 okay. to 9.30. 8.30 to 9.30? Yes, because I am extremely free tomorrow. It's public holiday. Okay, 8.30. Well, we have one. Okay, anyone? Melissa, do you got one? Whatever you choose, Pastor. Okay, it's Melissa. Said Let's just say 8 30 to 9 30. 8 30 9 30? Yeah. Okay, then we have an 8 30 to 9 30. Pooh Bear, that would be 9 30 to 10 30 your time in AZ. If you're good with that. All right, then it, it is official. Then we would do a 8 30 to 9 30. And this what lesson. Time? Excuse me, what time is it in California? Because we're still showing the same time. Arizona time doesn't change. Oh, it does. Oh, that's right. We're the only we're the only insane people still doing that. We're at <laughs> right now. <laughs> so 1043 our time. So match that. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be the same tomorrow. OK, yeah. well, eight, eight thirty. You say eight thirty, eight thirty. I'm sending out the, um, the Zoom scheduling and all that stuff. OK. All right. And this lesson is going to be in three parts because it is really, really, really long. And if I did it today, it would literally take us two hours in less than I read really, really fast. And I want you guys to get it. So we decided to break it down in three portions. That way we don't over flood you and then we don't bore you. <laughs> all right. So, and this is one of my favorite lessons because we always and always reference the Holy Spirit. And Melissa did such a great job last week on bringing that revelation in and sharing that with us. So we're going to talk about the lessons of the Holy Spirit. So one of the lessons or main characters is of the Holy Spirit is the mind and voice of God. Its function is to comfort and to teach. So when people are brokenhearted that are before you, this is why we would often refer to you and say, hey, ask the Holy Spirit, what can you do to say to soothe your brother or sister's broken heart? because he's the comforter. So he'll give you the words of revelation to say to that person. And then they will either receive it or reject it. That's on them. The function that is not of the Holy Spirit is vengeance and recompense. That is not the job of the Holy Spirit. Contrary to what the Bible says, to have vengeance would mean to have judgment and God only deals in unconditional love. He loves you when you mess up. He loves you when you're, when you're shining as bright as a star. So unconditional love doesn't judge because judgment would separate and God doesn't want to separate. He wants to unify. It's all about unity. This is why we are what? One. It's about the oneness to bring us into the mind of Christ. 
So when people hear the vengeance and, oh my God, it's gonna get back at you. It is a, a judgmental idea that is false because it creates separation. Does it not? Mine against yours. If you say you are a Buddhist and they are of Christian, clash. Now all of a sudden, the Christians start trying to convert you. Notice it never goes the other way. Hardly ever, hardly ever, hardly ever. If you are in Islam and you are a Christian, then it becomes we have to convert each other. Right? So now the Holy Spirit's job is to come in and reconcile and correct all those misinterpretations and bring it all together and say, hey, you are all under monotheism, polyotheism, ideology, theology, one God concept, many God concept. You're all explaining it in your own way so that you can understand the divine source. That's the job of the Holy Spirit as the teacher. Does that make sense? Okay. Woof. Question number one. Oh, any questions on that? <laughs> Question number one, the Holy Spirit only teaches to make you what? It's in the first paragraph. <laughs> we haven't seen the first part. First, first line. Oh. Like any good teacher, the Holy Spirit knows more than you do now. But equal. there you go. Oh, it does what? Make you what? Equal. God. There you go. Jesus said. He did not consider robbery to be equal with God. No separation. In other words, the unification. So Holy Spirit makes you equal. Let that register for a minute. When you look at the vastness and the glory of the Holy Spirit, and he says, I'm going to make Lily equal, Anton equal, Teresa equal, Tori equal, Trayvon equal. And we're all equal. You man, my hair has just stood up <laughs> because that should bring you into no resistance of the creator. Did God make the body? We did. Yes, archangels, you all are cells of archangels. Archangels means high messengers, so each one of you that are cells of an archangel, you projected your spirit into what you call an avatar body. Remember we talked about what the body's purpose is, which is a communication device. The mind is in control of the body. This was all about the mind, not the body. What is the body? There's two answers. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's our temple. Okay, I'll give you that one. Uh, what else? Just now we just mentioned is that our communicating device. Yes, there you go. Absolutely, absolutely. Both of you right. And also let me add this. It's your projection of who you think you are. That's does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Well, so that, so uh, technically three answers. <laughs> 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 so not two answers, three answers, because Lily is also correct as well. Question number four, only one equal gift can be offered to the equal sons of God and that is blank. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? I, I would think everything that you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than one. <laughs> That's more than one. Okay. I will tell you later on in the answer that because it's, it's a deeper meaning, but that, that is a good stab at it. Great stab at it. And if you really think about the question, when we are making a statement about the Holy Spirit and the equal, equality of God and what he has given us, if you think about it, only one equal gift can be offered to the sons of God, and that is what? Love. Love, yes. What else? Equality. Oh. Equality. Everybody's equal. There is no separation between. 
Does that make sense? Yes. So the affirmation is to have, to have all is to give all. To have, sorry, to have, give all to all. To have, give all to all. Yes, Lily. This is uh, this is like something that we share all, all this while. Is that we 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 may not have too much, but we are always sharing with as many as we can, right? Yeah. Yes. And so we 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 don't really have the mentality that if I share with somebody, I have less. No, right. Things that we have more and more. So that's Absolutely. how we generate what we have. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Great answer. And it's also where you go, where it's written, it is better to give than to what? Receive. Yes. Absolutely. Hello, God Williams. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Pastor. Any praise report testimonies, by the way? We're on, on our affirmation. No, keep going. I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, you do. I'm going to share one for her, it, <laughs> with her permission. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. She lost her, her ID card and her visa or, or credit card. It was a credit card, yeah. Credit card. And she sent me a text. And I said, ask Archun Chamuel to help you bring it back. Now, remember a couple of months ago, maybe last year, she had had her backpack broken into, and the same Archangel brought the backpack. So fast forward, he brought the back the ID card and the credit card. Wow. It was in her shoe. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you. So the reason why I shared that with you is if you lose anything or anybody, you can ask Archangel Samuel to bring it back to you. Now, the secret is you got to be patient. We're not going to mention no names who ran to the DMV, but if they'd have waited a day, <laughs> they would have got their ID back. <laughs> but the blessing about the DMV was, wasn't long, there wasn't a long line like it normally would have been. So even though there was little patience, but there was a lot of faith in saying, hey, I don't want to stand on a whole line for my ID card. So there was a blessing in the blessing to have give all to all. Make sense? All right. Like any good teacher, the Holy Spirit knows more than you do now, but he teaches only to make you equal with him. Sister Williams, we're on page 297. And the title is The Thank Lesson you. of the Holy Spirit, Three Parts. Also, tomorrow we will meet 8.30 to 9.30 tomorrow if you are available. Okay, <clears throat> you had already taught yourself wrongly having believed what was not true. You did not believe in your own perfection. This is not you, we're just talking. Would God teach you that you had made a split mind when he knows your mind only as whole? <clears throat> no. What God does know is that his communication channels are not open to him. So that he cannot impart his joy and knows that his children are wholly joyous. Given this joy is an ongoing process, not in time, but in what? Eternity. Did everybody catch that? Giving his joy is an ongoing process, not in time, but that means you can receive joy anytime you want. Nobody should be unjoyous. God's extending outward, though not his completeness, is blocked when the sonship does not communicate with him as one. So he thought, my children sleep and must be awakened. Can somebody read the next one? How can you wake your children? How can you wake children in more kindly way than by gentle voice? That will not frighten them. Hold on. So when I wake my children up. I don't go in and banging pots and pans and blowing whistles and stomping and screaming and throwing trash cans like they did to us in boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I go in and I gently say, hey, guys, it's time to wake up. And I give them a little nudge here and there. That way, because, you know, you don't want to frighten people because I learned that when I was in the Navy and you wake people up for their watch and they're in a deep sleep, they might come out swinging on you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, please continue. That will merely wake you down that the night is over and the light has come. Mm -hmm. You do not inform them that the nightmare has frightened them so they are not real. Because children believe in magic. Mm -hmm. You merely reassure them that they are safe now. Mm -hmm. Then you train them to recognize that the difference between sleep and awakening. You change, you, when you are teaching those, even now, the different, even yourselves, the difference between sleeping and waking. And all of you now know that you're awake and not asleep. Okay? Go ahead. So they will understand that you need not to be afraid of strength. Mm -hmm. And so when bad days come, they will, they will themselves call on the light to control them. Does that make sense? How many of you have had a bad dream? Every last one of you. Yeah. No one explained the dream to you until a pastor came along and said, hey, if you dream of people, you didn't create it. If you dream of the place, you create it. And then we talked about that part. <clears throat> okay, so in this, in this, <clears throat> in this context, all right, um, the bad dreams is referring to bad encounters or bad experience or what? What is okay? Great question. What happens is when you all go into your dream state or your REM state, gamma, you your spirit is free will and it leaves the body. And because it's free will and leaves its body, you begin to travel. You'll travel to different places. You'll travel to different events. You'll travel to people. You'll travel. What happens is you'll start doing so much that some of it will get so confusing because in your spirit world, it's normal. When you bring it back to this body, it doesn't make any sense to you. That would be like you trying to explain faith. Can't do it. It doesn't make sense. So when you start trying to explain the bad dreams of the scary monsters, well, these are things that are not to your understanding. So now you have a boogeyman. Now you have a devil. Now you have all these things that scare you. And then you wake up and, oh my God, man, that thing was chasing me. It almost got me, Pastor. And when I went back to bed, it was chasing me again. I had that dream. So I had to learn through the Holy Spirit's teaching, this teaching. So I had to learn the difference between the sleep and the wake. So now I had to say, why was I encountering that dream? Watch this. If you watch too much garbage on your TV and go to bed, you're going to take that with you. If you fight with your loved ones, spouse, friends, other whatever you're going to take that with you and then you're going to have a bad dream if your body's out of alignment and you're tired and haven't got sufficient rest you're going to have a what bad dream because now it's dispelled energy that you haven't focused on so there's a lot of factors to that question so it's not just one answer it's multiple answers so the first one would be your spirit leaves the body and you begin to travel We'll say, where do you travel to? Different dimensions, because that's the only place you can go. You all might call the seventh dimension heaven. Some would travel to heaven. Some would even create a hell. You're free to do whatever you want. So now when the alarm clock goes off, you're jolted back into the body. Then it's, oh my God, I got to start the day. And you're trying to hit the alarm clock. Yeah. And you try to focus on what did I just bring back into my memory that I don't understand? That felt so real that nobody can take me out of that believing. Then the second one is I watch this garbage and I take it to bed. Third, I have a fight, take it to bed. Fourth, insufficient sleep, take it to bed. Yes, Lily. Uh Melissa, I remember there was one time where we had to spend a long time in our HQ in Taiwan. And, and we had to, like, continuously, it's like a boot camp for uh, learning uh, the scriptures. 
the Buddhist scriptures. And then there was in between one of the night, um, I had a dream. Is that uh, I went somewhere. It looks like a big temple with a very big killers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you imagine what was on the killer? Live dragons yep. going around. I was going like, what? And then I came back down. Yep, absolutely. And nobody can convince you that that was not real. Because it was real. The funny thing is, we have another friend who said she went there too. Right. <laughs> absolutely. And it was like, I didn't see you. Yeah, I didn't see you too. I was busy looking at the temple. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, isn't it interesting that y'all both talked about the same dream, didn't see each other, but saw the temples? Uh, wow. Mm -hmm. You can't make that up because how could two people have the same dream in the same place, even though you weren't looking for her because you was too busy looking at the what? Dragons. Why? Because there's no dragons in this third dimensional realm. The only dragons we have are big lizards. <laughs> 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 that makes sense. Yeah. No, Pastor. So, this 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 context says that between sleeping and waking, is this talking about spiritual sleeping and waking, or really physical sleeping and waking? Yes and yes. Both. Okay. So when you are saying about the uh, spiritual sleeping and waking, right? So the bad dreams are referring to. What you bad think, experience? Your bad experiences, what you perceive as a bad experience, what you don't understand that might feel negative, that you consider a bad dream, any of those things. Now, when you wake up, you immediately tell yourself, watch this. Let me ask you a question to answer Melissa's question. Have any of you had a dream, woke up and thought you were still dreaming <laughs> so you had to really assure yourself that you were what dreaming my youngest son often states that he gets sleep paralysis where he is stuck he's awake but he can't move the body most of you have experienced this also wake up and you're like oh can't move what's going on Sometimes it goes on for a period of time where it becomes scary, where you don't know what's happening. That's because the body and the brain chemicals have, have I don't want to say disconnected, but they are out of alignment. <laughs> mm -hmm. That too can also cause bad dreams. People who go into out-of-body experience, that that you would call death, come back with the most extraordinary visions. Sometimes they're scary to them. Sometimes they're magnificent. Just depends on the person's perception. Make sense? Yes. The simplest way to dissect a dream, and we'll move on. If you dream of a person, you didn't dream it. You didn't create it. If you dream of a place, you created that. The reason why you cannot dream of people is because of free will. You can't control. So it's kind of like a reverse thing. They're thinking of you, you're thinking of them, y'all contact. Okay? Yeah. Good to go, Melissa? Yes, good. All right. Keep going. Oh, I was, oh. So when the bad dreams come, they will themselves call on the light and dispel them. A wise teacher teaches through approach not avoidance. Isn't this correct, student? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. He or she does not emphasize what you must avoid to escape from harm, but what you need to learn to have joy. Consider the fear and confusion a child would experience if they were told, do not do this because it will hurt you and make you unsafe. But if you do not, but if you do that instead, you will escape from the harm and be safe and then you will not be afraid. It is surely better to use only three words. Do only that. Mothers say, don't do that. <laughs> Everyone has a confused look, You're, we good? <laughs> <laughs> 
But think about it. When I was teaching my children about fire, I never explained to them fire. I would just merely tell them, don't touch the stove. The stove is hot. You're going to burn yourself. Does a child know anything about hot, burn, none of that? What does a child want to do? Touch it. Free will. You just told him, her, him, don't touch it. And what do they do? Touch it. And then we go berserk. Did I tell you not to touch him? <laughs> and the kid is going, oh, oh, oh. So now he's tortured in the hand and tortured in the butt. <laughs> but nobody taught him, don't touch the fire. So now, what is his lesson about fire? Fear. We didn't explain to him, this is why you don't touch it because it is unsafe for you. You don't run into the street because this is unsafe for you. So now once they learn that subtle lesson, they'll go, well, mom told me this was not safe. So I better listen because when I touched that stove, it was really hot. Now, did they touch the stove again? No. <laughs> this simple statement is perfectly clear, easily understood and very easily remembered. The Holy Spirit never itemizes errors because he does not frighten children and those who lack wisdom are children. Those who lack wisdom are children. You have children that are wiser than some of the adults. Would you not agree? Yeah. Yeah, he always answers their call and, he did, and his dependability makes them more what? Certain. Children do confuse con fantasy and reality, and they are frightened because they do not recognize the difference. The Holy Spirit makes no distinction among dreams. He merely shines them away. His light is always to call to awaken whatever you have been what? Dreaming. Nothing lasting lies in dreams, and the Holy Spirit shining with the light from God himself speaks only for what lasts forever. Okay. Part A, to have, give all to all. That's where we get our affirmation. Can somebody read this next part? Tori, can you read this one? If he's on, where do you go? Your speaker might not work. Okay. When your body and your ego and your dreams are gone, you will know that you will last forever. Perhaps you think it's accomplishment through death, but nothing is accomplished through death because death is nothing. Everything is accomplished through life and life is life is a, a mind and a mind is, and in the mind. Mm -hmm. The body neither lives or dies because it cannot continue or continue who you are alive. Mm -hmm. If we share the same mind, you can you can overcome death because I did. That's, that is an attempt to resolve conflict by not de deciding at all. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now, death is nothing. Death is a concept. Death releases you from all your creations on this planet. So you start anew. There is a karmic, there is a dharma karma cycle that people go through, but we'll teach that later. Keep going. Like any other impossible solution, the ego attempts it will not work. God did not make the body because it is destructible and therefore not of the kingdom. The body is the symbol of what you think you are. <clears throat> it is clearly a separation and therefore does not exist. So does your body exist? This is why when you die, you go back to ash to ashes, dust to dust. We don't care if you get buried or embalmed, it's going to go back to ashes or you get cremated, you're going to go back to ashes either way. But without the spirit in the body, the body would be, able, would be unable to function. The Holy Spirit is always, as always, takes what you have made and translate it into a learning device. So he takes those bad dreams and tries to teach you as a learning device. 
Sometimes it's hard to sort out all those different thoughts that you bring back. Again, as always, he reinterpretate, reinterprets what the ego uses as an argument for separation into a demonstration against it. If the mind can heal the body, but the body cannot heal the mind, then the mind must be stronger than the body. Every miracle demonstrates this. I have said that the Holy Spirit is the motivation for miracles. He always tells you that only the mind is real because only the mind can be shared. Only the mind can be shared. Let this mind, when two or three are gathered, you can't agree with everybody. Everybody don't have the same mind as you. Some people have ulterior motives to their mind because they weren't taught as you were taught. The body is separate and therefore cannot be part of you. To be of one mind is meaningful, but to be one body is meaningless. By the laws of mind, then the body is meaningless. To the Holy Spirit, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. This is familiar enough to you by now, but it's not yet become believable. Therefore, you do not understand it and cannot use it. We have too much to accomplish on behalf of the kingdom to let this cruel concept slip away. It is a real foundation stone of the thought system I teach and want you to teach. You cannot perform miracle without believing it. Melissa could not have performed that miracle with the person who had cancer without believing it. He could not have healed himself without understanding what Melissa was teaching to get healed. Does that make sense? Only one equal gift, here's the answer to your question, of question number four, only one equal gift can be offered to the equal sons of God, and that is full appreciation. Full appreciation. Nothing more and nothing less. Without a range, order of difficulty is meaningless. And therefore, there must be no range in what you offer to your brothers or sisters. The Holy Spirit, who leads to God, translate, translate communication into being, just as he ultimately translates perception into knowledge. Sir, can you read the next one? Uh, can you read? Page uh, 301. Can third, you hear me? Third paragraph. Does my mic work? Oh, it works. Okay. You do not lose what you communicate. The ego uses the body for attack or pleasure and for pride. This is any of this precipitation makes it a fearful one indeed. The Holy One sees the body and at the body only as a means of communication. And because the community is sharing it because communion. Perhaps you think that fear as well as love can be communicated Hold and therefore. Hold on real quick. He says the Holy Spirit sees the body only as a means of communication. And because community is sharing it becomes communion. You ever pick up somebody's energy where all of a sudden you're perfectly okay. And all of a sudden you felt a headache or a sharp pain or sadness or depression or something that's off. This is what it means when they wake up and go, oh, I'm sick, or I'm tired, or I hate this, or I hate that. This is the projection of the energy, and if, when you're not grounded, you'll pick up those type of energies. Now that's communion. So you have to say, this is not mine, because you know you're perfectly sane in your mind. Does that make sense? Okay, keep going. Keep going, Tori. Yeah, this is not so real as it may appear. Those two communion communicate fear are promoting attack attack and attack always break communication make it possible egos do join together in separately allegiance the always for what each one can get separately the holy spirit communication communicates only what each can give it to all he never takes any back because he wants you to keep it. Therefore, his teaching begins with the lesson to have to have give all to all. This is a very preliminary step and the only one you must take for yourself. 
It is not even necessary that you complete the step yourself, but it is necessary that you turn in that direction, meaning your mind. Having chosen to go that way, you place yourself in charge of the journey. You place yourself in charge of the journey. So if you place yourself in charge of the journey, that means you are the storyteller. So tell the story that you want as you go on your journey. Side note, where you and only you must remain. This step may appear to be exaggerate conflict rather than resolve it because it is the beginning step in reversing your perception and turning the right side up. Remember when we do the be, do, have? When you do the be, do, have process, you're reversing the order of that step. It's like saying, I've received it now before I've asked for it. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. This conflict with the upside down perception you have not yet abandoned or the change in direction would have not been necessary. Some remain at this step for a long, long, long time experiencing very acute conflict. So the people that we see going through difficulties right now, these are the people that we are referring to. Those that are choosing to suffer for a long time because they've separated themselves from the creator. At this point, they may try to accept the conflict rather than to take the next step toward its resolution. So when people are in difficult situations, do they talk themselves out of it or do they talk themselves more into it? <clears throat> more into it. Because the harder it gets, the harder it gets, the harder it gets, the more it piles up, the more it becomes their believing that now it's impossible. They'll never reach that goal. <clears throat> having taken the first step, having taken the first step, having, how do you take the first step? Not just with your feet. <laughs> the thought, the thought, the thought. The thought. The new sponsoring thought. Your first step is the new sponsoring thought. Do I love myself the way God loves me? No. Can I love myself the way God loves me? Yes. How do I get there? Love myself more and more. Become selfless. Notice we didn't say selfish. Selfless means I'm going to take care of me first to heal me because if I heal me, I can heal someone else. Rockets of desires too, right? What? Say it again. Rocket of desire. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. When she says rockets of desires, this is what you call asking for what you desire, and you're following a good trail of thought toward that idea, toward that desire, into alignment of it. So when people wake up and say, I am sick, what happens to them? What did them what did they just what did the mind just tell the body? Start aligning yourself with sickness. <laughs> now, the wonderful law of attraction brings who? Everybody who was sick with that nature, huh? Mm -hmm. And then they begin to tell what? Sick. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Sudi tells his sick story. Pastor comes along and my sick story got to trump his sick story because mine got to be better. And now what are we doing? We're agreeing to this sickness and now when I leave telling this sick story and I go to the next one, they go, Pastor, how you doing? Oh man, I am so sick. So now this is the second person I've told this to. Now let's go back to the first person. What did Sudi do? He went back and told a sick story to somebody else, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he told it to Lily. Lily said, shut up. <laughs> but Meekins went <clears throat> and kept telling that sick story. And what did I just do? I planted seeds to everybody that was around me, now I infected them with the seed of sickness. Mm -hmm. Until somebody comes along and said, well, Pastor, ain't you supposed to heal yourself? Oh, well, 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 you know, God's will. Well, God's will is for you to be whole, holy. Make sense? Yeah. So having to take the first step is like student says, master student, changing the mind. However, 
they will be helped. Once they have chosen what they cannot complete alone, they are no longer alone. When you accept, I cannot do this by myself, you are no longer alone. Pastor, nobody around me. Boy, this room is packed. Yes, Lily. Okay, the Buddhist way uh, to explain this kind of situation is that uh, for a person, when you start feeling uh, it's a bit difficult for you, and if you cannot change your mindset, you're going to be so stuck until you cannot do anything. In the end, you just say, I'm going to give up. That's where the help will come in. Yep, absolutely. And notice, let me add to what my brother said when he made that saying. When you turn, when you, you can't serve two masters, you either love one or hate the other. So when I stop looking at the suffering and I let it go because the body can't handle it or I'll die, now all of a sudden I've not focused on that problem anymore. Now what happens? Solution comes, answer comes, resolution comes, freedom comes, deliverance comes. Problem is when that happens often, Sometimes we like to go back and be slaves. <laughs> not all of us, but we've seen people do it. They'll give it to God and not wait and be impatient and as if God cannot handle it and then get it back from God. I'll take care of it, God. You're not moving fast enough. You're still in quarantine from the COVID. We understand. You haven't got your shot yet. I got this. <laughs> So when you recognize the Holy Spirit's presence, the greater is he who is in you, you're never alone. And then what will happen is that law of attraction will draw like-minded to people to help encourage you, boost you up and vice versa. Now you guys are talking in alignment because words are vibration that turns into matter, turns into energy, turns into your physical, tangible things. I want husband. Here comes husband. What type of husband? Loving husband, abusive husband, don't care husband. What type of husband? Resourceful husband? Sit around and eat Cheetos all day husband? Drink beer all day husband? Taters your need husband? Or are you specific in this is what I want in terms of husband? This is what I want in terms of wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, house, car, health relationship with people at work who wants to go to a hostile relationship at their work site nobody who wants to come home to a hostile nobody so that makes sense all right questions comments yes. yes any questions comments concerns we're going to stop here at b and we'll do b tomorrow 8 30 to 9 30 to have peace Teach peace, learn it. Okay. This will be the peace that shall surpass all understanding on tomorrow's night. All right. Who wants to close this out? Anyone? Anson, did you say yes? Or was that a yawn? <laughs> all right. I guess I'll close this out then. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you. We love you. We adore you so much. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for all that you send us, all the help, whether we see it or don't see it. We thank you for the miracles that we recognize and don't recognize that we pass on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanking you to recognize that we are the miracle. We thank you for just using us into your glory, your honor, your will. Thank you for all that are here or present that you continue to bless them with health, abundance, prosperity. Continue to use them for signs, one of the miracles, their gift and their talents, drawing many unto them as they spread the light of enlightenment love, wisdom, mind. We thank you for this peace. We thank you for this passion. This is our prayer in our name. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. All right, family, we love you all. We will see you tomorrow, 8.30 to 9.30. Have a blessed day of deliberately creating, and I will meet you all in the spirit. See you soon. Uh -huh.